Hi, I'm Black Bright and I'm broadcasting out of the UK. And I decided to, to um, read my editorial um, for the next edition of my magazine, Black Bright News, which you can find in the link below, www.issue.com, I-S-S-U-U.com forward slash Black Bright News. So I decided to read the editorial, which is entitled, What do the Commonwealth um, Independents Windrush and the Bre and Brexit have in common. So um, yeah, and it was inspired by a lady. She called. She wrote to me, and she was asking me about a granddaughter who wanted to find out about how she could stay in the country on indefinitely to remain on the basis of her grandfather who came over in the 1960s via the Windrush. Okay, so I'm going to read it. So, apologise for no eye contact, but bear with me. Okay, I'm, I'm writing this because someone asked me if a grandchild of the Windrush generation would get her ILR approved. It led me to reading the sixth report of the House of Commons on the Windrush generation, listening to Theresa May's apologies to the Caribbean leaders, reflecting on immigration rules and how and why they changed, and then in a weird way it led me to Brexit. And traditionally for me, I'm going to read my thoughts because I don't want to go, of course, but occasionally I will ad lib. The Windrush generation, so called after MV Windrush ship that brought many of the Windrush generation over, helped build the UK after World War II. They were welcomed off the ship, but not welcomed in the country. How dare these niggers invade our land, was the general train of thought. People like my mother were insulted, abused, attacked, if not verbally, then physically. But our parents soldiered on. They worked hard and hoped that their legacy and their hard work would make a place for our younger generations. But our young generation's lives have been destroyed through unemployment, through poverty, discrimination, resulting in frustration. And especially with regard to black youths, they have been victims of racial pro profiling, lack of opportunities, abuse of power, resulting in crime. Now, we do have many black um, youths who have avoided that. And I'm not quite sure why the disparity is, but like we say, there's always good and bad in everyone. So this, of course, is, can't make a generalised statement. I'm just saying it as it is. And I'm talking about those who are affected by this situation, not those who are not. White policy makers take it out on foreigners who get into trouble, who do not do as they are told, or worse, who do not play by the rules. Before 1973, Commonwealth citizens, i.e. the Windrush generation, were allowed to bring their families, which ironically is the same year that Denmark, Ireland and Britain joined the EU to avoid economic decline. And there lies the parallel. The Windrush were brought in to build up the country and UK joins the EU to avoid economic decline. Jamaica was the first Commonwealth country to gain independence in 1962. They set the trend for other Caribbean islands to follow suit in the 1960s. Severing ties from the UK meant Jamaicans had no loyalties and neither did the other islands. So that is probably why once the Gen Windrush generation had done their job, the UK said, stuff you. And can you blame them? No. Commonwealth citizens, um, had, they had no reason to stay anymore. And yeah, they had no reason to stay for them to stay anymore. So in came the 1981 British Nationality Act, which came into force in 1983. While the British Nationality Act of 1948 made provision for the Windrush generation and family members, the British Nationality Act 1981 that came into force in 1983 stated that only those born in the UK before 1983 would be British citizens. But it wasn't widespread news, so nobody knew. So with regard to that um, grandchild, because they came in, I think they came in 1985 there there could be that could be a little bit mm, iffy people continued to bring over families and have children believing the same rules applied only to find through the hostile environment policy that oops 
the rules had changed. Relying on the fact that foreigners were unlikely to be clued up on immigration and therefore not know about the change in rules, the policy makers knew they would have a legitimate reason to get rid of them when the time came. And those who did not take the time to update themselves on immigration rules only had themselves to blame. We have all heard the phrase, if you want to hide something from a, from a black person, put it in a book. The independence of the Caribbean islands is probably the reason why the UK ceased to have allegiance with the Commonwealth countries. And like I said, you can't blame them. But you can blame them for, their, for not notifying via the news or the media for the changes in legislation. Why should that, you know, it's almost like spite. Why should they extend their hospitality to people who have exchanged themselves from them? But then, isn't that what the UK is doing now with Brexit? The Windrush generation, although unwelcome, were useful to build the country, but then needed, they needed to be got rid of once they had the job done. The EU is the same. Britain's elite needed them when they were going through economic decline, but now they feel strong enough, they feel as though they don't need them anymore. So they want to extract themselves. I don't know why the, why the UK feel they're strong enough when they have so much debt. Their industry is reliant on the EU for about 40%. They offer low paying jobs and they have the audacity to blame it on immigration. But that will work because many of those who concoct these fallacies are manipulative races that feed the masses with untruths that the immigrants are taking their jobs, are, com are committing most of the terrible crimes and murders. Let's blame it on the niggers and let them fight it out amongst themselves. And while they temporarily stay out of the country with all their money safe in Swedish banks until everything is over. The government have allowed everything to spiral out of control deliberately so they can blame their failures on the foreigners. Have you noticed how often the word foreign is cropping up? It is the most common, it is a common narrative now. They are subliminally fueling hatred and resentment. It's not the Windrush generation's fault that they came over here legally as British citizens and felt entitled to raise their families here. Their invitees never bargained on the Windrush generation staying. They never bargained on them having children and building generations of Brits. So the boarding passes went missing. Young blacks were jailed and Caribbeans were deported for minor offences. The EU was set up to end the wars between neighbours, which culminated in World War Two. Could it be that they want to extract themselves so that they can have a World War Three? What better way to get rid of another aspect of history that has gone horribly wrong? Let's kill all the storytellers and destroy the, this unflattering part of our history and rebuild a new world based on more lies to feed subsequent generations like we were fed. The UK has broken their loyalty with the EU, so the EU is saying, stuff you. England may have once again bitten the hand that feeds them and may be as in the past, when they rewrite history in a way that shows them in a better light, they may call on a new immigrant generation who is ignorant of their history, as we were, to bail them out. They may even look for an equivalent of another EU to join to help bail them out after World War Three. Who knows? Will they be successful? Only karma will tell. Yeah, so I did that as an editorial and I thought I would read it out because I thought it contained some interesting information. And just in case you don't get to um, access the publication, at least you have that, which I felt held some important information. So that's all for now. Bye bye.